everyone. Welcome to STEAM for Tweens. I'm Miss Jennifer here at the Warrington Library. This month at the library, we are celebrating Die November. As part of this programming, this month's STEAM for Tweens is all about fossils. If you picked up your supplies here at the library, you have everything you'll need for this program. If you didn't get a bag, you'll need to gather some Play-Doh or clay and objects to use to imprint into the dough to make a fossil. Fossils form when a dead animal or plant is covered by sediment. Eventually, the organic matter in the bone or plant, such as the blood vessels and tissue, slowly turns into rock, which becomes known as a fossil. Fossils generally form as either mold fossils or as cast fossils and are either considered a trace fossil or a body fossil. Cast and mold fossils are the remains of organisms or casts and the imprint that they leave in the surrounding rock or molds. Trace fossils are marks or other evidence that is left behind by organisms that become fossilized. So we have a footprint here. Body fossils are fossils that include part of or the entire body of an organism. And of course, here we have a dinosaur. An imprint created by something pressed into the soil or mud that later becomes fossilized, such as a footprint in rock, is an example of a mold fossil and a trace fossil. Tracks or footprints provide knowledge about the speed, length of stride, how many legs the organism walked on, and how the organism held its tail, hunting behavior, and herd behavior. Corporalites, or fossilized feces, and tooth marks provide knowledge about the diet of organisms. Burrows and nests provide knowledge about habitat, predators, and mating and young raising habits. A mineral deposit in the shape of a shell is an example of a cast fossil or a body fossil. In rare cases, organisms or parts of organisms are entirely preserved. Bones, teeth, and fossilized eggs are the most common body fossils. Petrified fossils occur when minerals permeate and harden an organism or part of an organism, or when an organism it is encased in a substance that does not out allow decomposition. So here we have some petrified wood. A piece of petrified wood or an insect trapped in amber are two examples of petrification. Fossils help scientists to understand the behavior, movement, diet, habitat, and anatomy of prehistoric organisms. Specimens are usually considered to be fossils if they are over 10,000 years old. The oldest fossils are, are around 3.48 billion years old to 4.1 billion years. Relative dating is used to determine a fossil's approximate age by comparing it to similar rocks and fossils of known ages. Absolute dating is used to determine a precise age of a fossil by using radiometric dating to measure the decay of isotopes either within the fossil or more often the rocks associated with it. So let's take a look at some fossils together. Okay. Our first fossil is an ammonite. It's from the Jurassic period. And its relatives in, include squid and snails. And you can see, let me pull this up just a little bit. Um, you can see the spiral here that looks very much like a snail's shell. Now, this is actually 
from the same uh, time frame when dinosaurs would have roamed the earth. Dinosaurs existed during the Mesozoic era, which is 252 to 66 million years ago, and they include the, the Cretaceous, Jurassic, and Triassic periods, and the Ammonite is from the Jurassic period, approximately 146 to 200 million years old. Our next, next example is a crinoid stem. And this is actually from a time frame even older than dinosaurs. It's from the Devonian age, which is approximately 359 to 416 million years ago. Its modern relatives are the starfish, sea urchins, and sea cucumbers. Next up, we have an Orthoceros which is also from the Devonian age. So again, older than the dinosaurs. It is related to a modern day squid. Next, we have a trilobite. And this is again from the Devonian age, um, period. And its relatives include the crab, the spider, and other insects. And you can see just part of the trilobite skeleton here. We just have a portion of it. Our next fossil is a brachiopod. It is from the Cretaceous period. So it is from the time when the dinosaurs were here and they are um, still around in some form today. So some of these still exist. You can see it's sort of like, almost like a clamshell. Our next fossil is branch coral. It's Devonian, and it is also still around in some form. Many types of coral still exist today. Next up, we have a gastropod. This is from the Cretaceous period, approximately 65 to 146 million years old. And its relatives in the modern day are slugs and snails. And again, you can see that sort of spiral shape. Now we have a fossil clam from the Cretaceous period, and it is related to modern day clams as well. You can see the edge here where the clam would open from and the little hinge here at the back. And last but not least, we have a fossil snail. And of course, you know that snails still exist today. And again, we can see that spiral shape that snails are so well known for. And that is a fossilized snail. For our, our activity today, we are going to use Play-Doh and objects like our dinosaur toy, a seashell, and a leaf to create mold fossils. So you'll need to, we actually gave, in our bags, we gave you two little tubs of Play-Doh. You'll probably need to open both and combine them together to make one big ball so that you can get a good fossil and we're going to soften that up and smush them together and then we're going to flatten it out between our hands so we make sort of a pancake shape and then we'll take our object let's start with the seashell and it's very simple we're just going to press the seashell into the play-doh and i hope you there you go oh you can see very well the imprint that it left behind and we have made a little bit of a mold fossil. All right, let's try another one. All right, this time I'll use my leaf and we're just going to press down on our Play-Doh and then press down on the leaf. And in this case, you'll see a bit of the branch 
There you go. You can see the stem of the leaf right there and the imprint that it made into the Play-Doh. So we've made another fossil. And last but not least, let's try our dinosaur. So you can do a trace fossil and stamp in the footprints. You could also try doing an entire profile. If we widen out our Play-Doh a little bit, we could get our an imprint of the whole dinosaur body in there and create a fossil. So you can actually use this method to make fossils of all sorts of things. So why don't you look around and see what you might be able to make a fossil of? And in this case, we're using replicas of things that really were alive and could potentially leave behind fossils. So shells and leaves and our little toy dinosaur here uh, were great examples to use, but you can make these out of anything. I hope you enjoyed today's program. Come by the library to check out some books featuring more information about fossils and help us celebrate Die November all month long. We have these and many others. Uh, Dinosaur Crafts on the Go will be available starting on November 7th, and we'll have a dinosaur picture hunt the week of November 14th. We'll be back in January with an all new STEAM for tweens, but in the meantime, head over to our website, FaulknerLibrary.org, click on the research button and select science, math, and environment from the list shown. There you'll find science online a resource featuring articles, videos, experiments, and activities to enjoy on a range of scientific topics. Thanks for watching and happy Dye November!